Okay, cool. Welcome back. And let's get going. Solve equations by factoring. That's what we have today. So it says to solve using the zero factor property. So let me write what that is real fast. So the zero factor property or zero product property, whatever we want to call it. So on our notes, it says zero factor property. So if we are given two factors, such as let's say X minus A and X plus B equal to zero, then if I have the product of two or more terms set equal to zero, this means that I can actually solve for X. So what I would do is set X minus A equal to zero, and x plus b equal to zero and solve for x. Here I get x equals a, here I get x equals negative b. So this is the zero factor property or also known as the zero product property. Okay, so that's what we're gonna be doing on these notes. We're gonna be given a quadratic equation. We're gonna have to factor it and solve for x. So we'll start with number one. Number one is 9x squared minus 16 equal to zero. Okay, this problem is going to use a special property. It's going to be called the difference of squares, which some mentioned last class. The difference of squares is known as a squared minus b squared. So if you have the difference of two perfect squares, then this will always factor to a plus b times a minus b. Or you could even write it as a minus b times a plus b. Doesn't matter. But they have to be two perfect squares. So looking back at number one, is 9 a perfect square? And is 16 a perfect square? Yes. 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 So since they are both perfect squares, and of course, x squared is a perfect square, then we can factor this to 3x plus 4 times 3x minus 4 equal to 0. So it's a difference of squares. It's going to factor to 3x plus 4, 3x minus 4. And now we use the zero factor property and set each term equal to zero. You'll have 3x plus 4 equal to zero, 3x minus 4 equal to zero. Move that 4 over, Oops. Uh, subtract that 4 to the right side. So you have 3x equals negative 4. On this one, add the 4 over, 3x equals 4. Then divide by 3 on both of them and you'll get x equals negative 4 thirds and x equals positive 4 thirds. There you go. And that's a special property called the difference of squares. Okay, everyone good with that? <laughs> For now? <laughs> Two, we have x squared plus 18x plus 16 equal to 9. Okay, and since we're solving quadratic equations, remember that 0 has to be on the right side. So what we're going to do is move this 9 over. So we're going to say minus nine, minus nine, and you will get x squared plus 18x and 16 minus nine, that is seven, right? Okay, 
So now we have a simpler quadratic equation. We have x squared plus 18x plus 7 equal to 0. And now we want to try and factor it. And these are the easiest ones to factor. So this is a trinomial, right? It is three terms. This is called a trinomial. And these types of trinomials are easy to factor because all we have to look for is the factors of seven that can possibly make the middle term when added together. So what we're gonna do is list the factors of seven and the only factors of seven are one and seven. Now I must ask you this. Oh, I messed this up, right? It's not 18, right? It's eight. Uh, yeah, sorry. This should be eight. I'm looking at, there we go. Uh, there we go. That should be eight. Let me just scroll over. I have it up on my other screen, but I guess I can't read. X squared plus eight X plus 16. Okay, so it is an eight. Okay, cool. So now this makes even more sense because I was gonna say you can't factor that. One and seven definitely cannot make 18. Okay, so now you list the factors of seven and can one and seven, when added up, can one and seven make eight? Yes. Yeah. So the way I would write that is I would say, I would just do this. I would say one plus seven equal to eight. Okay. So now we are getting ready to factor it. So the next thing we want to look at are the signs of your trinomials. So if our signs say plus plus, then this is even easier to factor. So this is gonna become x plus a number times x plus a number equal to zero. And what were the two numbers we found? One and seven. One and seven. I'll put one there. I'll put seven there and it's factored. That's it. And now, since it's factored, it's correctly factored, set each term equal to zero and solve for x. And here you'll get x equals negative one and here you'll get x equals negative seven. There we go. All right, and now another thing to look at, because I was talking about signs. So you want to look at the signs of a trinomial. So signs of our trinomial or our quadratic equation, whatever you want to call it. So if it's ax squared plus bx plus c, if it's plus plus, it's always going to factor to parentheses plus plus. If it's ax squared minus bx plus c, it's always going to factor to minus minus. And then if it's ax squared minus bx minus c, then it's going to factor to either plus minus or minus plus. And then the last form you will see if it's in the form of ax squared plus bx minus c. And it's the same result as above. It will either factor to plus minus or minus plus. So knowing your signs is important. Okay. Everyone good with number two? All right. Three. Two X squared plus five equal to two minus seven X. So again, we need to move everything over to the left side. 
So I'll say minus two, minus two, and then I'll add that seven X over and I'll just squeeze it in over here, plus seven X. Okay. So here's what we get. I get two X squared plus seven X, and then five minus two, that gives me three equal to zero. Okay, now this one is not as easy to factor as the one above it, because now, since there is a leading term greater than one on the, on the leading term on X squared, we now have to find the factors of the leading term. So we have to find the factors of two, and then we have to find the factors of three to mix and match until we factor it correctly. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So first up, factors of two. Well, we get lucky here. What are the only factors of two? One and two. One and two. What are the only factors of three? Three and one. Three and one, right? And again, we get lucky because this is plus plus. So now we know how to set up our signs. So now I'm going to get something plus a number times something plus a number equal to zero. OK, so when we're factoring these types of trinomials where the leading coefficient is greater than one, so the first position is for the factors of the leading term. So I'm going to put a one here and a two there. So in here, I'm going to have an x and a 2x. And then the last position in parentheses are for the factors of the constant, 1 and 3. So this means I'll put 1 here, and I'll put 3 there. But we're not done, because we have to check to make sure we factored it correctly. And the only way to check to see if we factored it correctly is to FOIL it back out. Just a really quick check. We have to do this, because if we didn't factor it correctly, we're going to have to switch some numbers around. OK, so when I FOIL this, you have the x times 2x. So that'll give me 2x squared. And then x times 3 gives me plus 3x. And then 1 times 2x gives me 2x. And then 1 times 3 gives me 3. If I put this together, I get 2x squared plus 5x plus 3. But does this look like this equation? No. No, because this middle term is 7, and this middle term is 5. So this means we need to try to factor it correctly. And one of the easiest fixes when you are factoring these types of trinomials is to switch the last two numbers. So you are going to switch these two numbers around. That is one of the easiest fixes. The other easy fix would be to switch the signs around. But that's not going to work in our case because our signs are both positive. So one of the easiest fixes is oops, we are going to put 3 here, and we are going to put one there. And now, if you FOIL again, x times 2x, 2x squared, x times 1 is x, 3 times 2x, 6x plus 3. You get 2x squared plus 7x plus 3. And does this look exactly like that? Yes. Yes. So this means we have factored it correctly on the second try. It's OK. We get as many tries as we need to. So now, since it's factored correctly, we can now set each term equal to zero using that zero factor property. And you'll have x plus 3 equal to zero, 2x plus 1 equal to zero. And here you'll get x equals negative 3. That one's done. Here you'll get 2x equals negative 1 divide by 2, and x equals negative 1 half. OK. 
And the method we use to factor this is called the educated guess and test method. Educated guess and test method. Okay. Before we go on, of course, there are many other ways to solve a problem. So educating guess and test is my favorite because one, I think it gets students faster at multiplying numbers in their head, faster at mixing and matching, know if they have it right or they don't. The other method is fail safe, unless you mess up a sign somewhere. So the other method, we'll do an option two here. Let me zoom out. So the other method is called the AC method. So we're going here, we're gonna say option two or method two, whatever you wanna say, AC method. Okay, so I'm gonna write the equation, the simplified one, two X squared plus seven X plus three equal to zero. And in order to use the AC method, remember you have to understand that this is a quadratic equation. So it looks like AX squared plus BX plus C equal to zero. Well, to do the AC method, you take A and multiply it by C. So in our case, our A value is two and our C value is three. So when I say AC, A times C, that gives me two times three, which gives me six. Now, you are gonna list all the factors of six. The factors of six are one and six and two and three. Those are all the factors of six. One and six, two and three. Now, look at this list of factors and which ones, when you add them together, will give you that middle term of seven. One and six. One and six. So one and six is our winner. And this is what we're gonna do. We are gonna write one and six as X plus six X. And I'm gonna show you what we do with that. So now I bring the original equation down, two X squared. And now I'm gonna put in the X and the six X we got from the AC method. And then plus three, equal to zero. So if I show you what happened, let me rewrite the original original, seven X plus three. What we did was take seven and split it into X plus six X. Okay, now you have a four term polynomial. And whenever you have a four term polynomial, you can only factor it one way. And that is called factoring by grouping. So what you'll do here is you'll group these two terms together and you'll group those two terms together and find a common factor between them. So let's look at the first group, 2x squared plus x. What common factor do you guys see? X. X, so I have an x squared and an x. So what I'm gonna do is factor out an X. If I factor out an X just from this term, this will leave me with two X plus one. Okay, now we look at this term, six X plus three. Does anybody know what the common factor is between six and three? Three. Three. Take out a positive three, and that will leave me with two X plus one. Okay, guys, almost there. Now, remember, you're still factoring. So whenever you factor, you look for something common. So on this next line, what looks common? Two X plus one. Two X plus one. And guess what you're gonna do with that? Factor it out. And if I factor 2x plus 1 out, what is left over? x and 3. x and 3. x plus 3. 
And there you go, guys. We are right there. 30 minutes later. But again, it's fail safe. It takes time, but it works. So this was called factor by grouping. Anybody heard of that one? No. <laughs> Here, 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 here. Okay, make sure there's no questions there. Okay, so that is another way to factor, guys, AC method. But I'm going to go with educated guess and tests for these notes. It's just a lot faster. Okay, now I everybody good with number three. Question. What's up? What's up? Um, for the, are we allowed to do like the butterfly one? Butterfly, you would have we're to like, show me. We're that. not the butterfly, but you kind of like, you like add, um, you multiply to like the B, and then you add to the C or something like that. Um, that's technically a C method, just put in a prettier wording, because is that is that the one where um, you like draw the X and put stuff in there? Yeah. Yeah, whatever works for you, but that's technically okay, a cool. C method, so you're good. Okay, cool. cool. <laughs> yeah, all the tips and tricks right okay all right let's keep rolling all right what looks hard number four looks hard so we'll go with that let's we'll skip around too because there's a lot of these problems and i don't want to run out of time all right number four x squared over nine plus one equal to two x over three okay we definitely don't want to factor with all these fractions. So let's get rid of them. Look at your common denominator. You have a nine and a three. What's my common denominator here? Nine. Nine. So I multiply everything by nine. Okay. And now when I multiply everything by nine, I distribute it in here. What do you think 9x squared over 9 is? 9 times x squared over 9 is. What does that leave me with? x squared. x squared. Good. Plus, and then what's 9 times 1? <laughs> 9. All right. Oops. 9. And then we distribute it here. All right. Nine times two X over three. Well, nine times two is 18. And what is 18 divided by three? Six. Six. So I'll be left with six X. All right. Now that looks prettier, right? No more fractions. So you have x squared plus 9 equal to 6. Again, we're solving a quadratic equation. So we need to move that 6 over to the left. So you'll have x squared minus 6x plus 9 equal to 0. OK. And now we are going to factor. And we get an easy one, because the leading term on this x squared is 1. <coughs> We don't have to worry about any factors from that. And all we have to do is worry about the factors of the constant, which is nine. OK. So what are the factors of nine? One and nine, three and one, three. One and nine, three and three. That's it, right? OK. Now, which of these factors, when added or subtracted, can give me negative six. Three. Three, and three. three and three. Three three. and three. So if I were to re if I were to write this to give me negative six, I would write this as negative three minus three, which gives me negative six. Okay. Now we're ready to factor. We look at our signs. Our signs are minus plus. That means my signs in the parentheses are both going to be minus, minus. And x goes here, 
X goes there. What number goes in there? Three. Three and three. Look at that. You can even match these negative threes up to what I wrote right there. Okay. Now, it's factored. It's definitely factored correctly. You could foil it to check it, but trust me, it's good. Now, since it's factored correctly, you can set each term equal to zero, and you'd have x minus 3 equals 0, x minus 3 equal to 0, and here you'd get x equals 3 and x equals 3. There you go. Everybody good? Okay. Cool. Factoring, huh? So much fun. <laughs> All right. Five. We'll go. Yep. Definitely do number five. 20 X squared plus 4x cubed plus 25x equal to zero. Okay, so what we're going to want to do first on this is rearrange this with the highest power first. So 20x squared plus 4x cubed plus 25x. So we're going to put that 4x cubed first and then the 20x squared and then the 25x equal to zero. Okay, now we're only used to factoring a quadratic equation where the highest power is x squared. Here, the highest power is x cubed. But do you notice a common factor? You have x cubed x squared and x. What could I factor out of there? x. An x. So we're going to take an x out. And if I do that, it will leave me with 4x squared plus 20x plus 25 equal to 0. OK. Of course, you want to look at the numbers too. Can you factor anything from 4, 20, and 25? Do they have any numbers in common? I. You could take a 5 from 20 and a 5 from 25, but can you take a 5 from 4? No. No. 20 inch. <laughs> so you could also take a 4 from 4 and a 4 from 20, but could you take a 4 from 25? Nope. No, right? So worth a shot. Always check the numbers too. Okay, so now we have one of the more complicated trinomials because now we have to factor the inside and we have a leading term of four and we have our constant of 25. And if you're wondering what a constant is, a constant is just a plain old number without a variable. So 25 is my constant. Okay, so now we will list all the factors of four and all the factors of 25. Well, factors of four, one and four, two and two. Factors of 25, one and 25, five and five. Okay, now we are ready to set up our signs and lucky us, plus, plus. So our parentheses are going to say something plus a number times something plus a number equal to zero. And do not forget what we factored out in the beginning. This x now has to tag along the whole way. OK. So now we have a couple of options. We need to know out of which of these factors, when added, multiplied together, multiplied and added together, is going to give me 20. So here are some options you could do. You could start with 1 and 4, 
and do one in 25. And if that doesn't work, you do one in four and five and five. If that doesn't work, that means you've exhausted all possible choices for one and four. And then you would have to go two and two and try one in 25 and try five and five. Well, I have a better option for you. So this only works, let's say it only works, I like to say 90% of the time. So if you have a long list of factors, here's not too long, but if you have a list of factors, 90% of the time, the bottom factors always work. And if they don't work, then we have to go through all the other options. Hence the phrase, educated guess and test. So let's see if our trick works. Oh yeah, and in order for this trick to work, your factors have to be listed in order. If they're out of order, then the trick gets thrown out. They must be listed in order. Okay, so let's try this out. We're gonna say 2x here, 2x there, and then a five here and a five there. Now let's see if it works. We're gonna FOIL 2x times 2x, 4x squared. 2x times 5, 10x, 5 times 2, 10x, and 5 times 5, 25. You get 4x squared plus 20x plus 25. Does that look like the equation inside the parentheses? Yep. Yes. So this means we have factored correctly which means that now we can set each term equal to zero and solve for x. And that even includes the x here. Do not leave them out. So set each term equal to zero. And look at this. That one's solved already, x equals zero. Look at that. And then move the five over, divide by two, x equals negative five halves. Same situation here. Since these are basically the same, you're also gonna get x equals negative five halves. All right. Also, you want to know one more cool trick. There's so many tricks today, right? One more cool trick how to check your final, final answers. The highest power of your equation tells you how many answers you should have. So look at our original rearranged equation. What is the highest power you see there? Three. Three. How many answers do we have? Three. Oh my goodness. Crazy, right? So if our highest power is three, that exponent is telling us you should have at least three answers. Cool. Same with x squared. If you went, wanted to check all our other answers up here, x squared, that's two. That means we should have two answers. All of them, two, two answers. So not bad. All right, everyone go with number five. All right. Um, six is all right, so we'll be good without six. Let's go to seven. We're gonna jump to seven. Seven. 10x squared equal to 5x. Okay. So number seven, 10x squared equal to 5x. Again, whatever's on the right side, move it to the left side. So we're going to just subtract that five to the left, and you'll have 10x squared minus 5x equal to zero. Okay. So now we notice that we don't have three terms. This is not a trinomial. This is not what we've been doing all day. This is a two-term polynomial or a binomial. 
So we actually luck out because now we have another easy factoring problem. And for number seven, all we have to do is look for the greatest common factors. And we're going to start with the numbers first. Between 10 and 5, what is the common factor I could take out? Five. Five. Good. And then between x squared and x, what is the greatest common factor there? X. X. Good. So if I factor a 5x out, I will be left with x minus 1. And again, if you ever want to check, no, not x minus 1, 2x minus 1. There we go. If you ever want to check your work, foil it, or in this case, distribute it. 5x times 2x is 10x squared. 5x times negative 1, negative 5x looks exactly like the original problem. Okay, and now we have completely factored it, set each term equal to zero, 5x equal to zero, 2x minus one equal to zero, divide by five here, and no matter what, x equals zero, add one over here, 2x equals 1, divide by 2, x equals 1 half. All right, not bad. Okay, everybody go with that. Okay, cool. All right, number eight, let's do that. That's got fractions. You have x squared over five plus x over four equal to three over 10. We hate fractions, so let's get rid of them. What is your common denominator between five, four, and 10? Twenty. Multiply this side by twenty. Multiply that side by twenty. Okay. Now for the first distribution, you get twenty over five. What's twenty divided by five? Four. Four. Good. So you get four x squared. For the second distribution, you get 20 divided by 4. What's that give me? 5x. For the last distribution, you get 20 times 3 over 10. So you get 60 over 10. What is 60 divided by 10? 6. 6. Good. All right. Or you could take a 10 out, that'd be one, that'd be two, and two times three gives you six. Okay, now we move this over to the left side. You subtract it, and you get 4x squared plus 5x minus six equal to zero, and now we factor. Okay. So here is the more complicated ones to factor. We want the factors of four and we want the factors of six. So four, one and four, two and two, six, one and six, two and three. Now we're gonna set up our signs. Plus minus means exactly that. We're gonna have x, well not x, but something plus a number, something minus a number equal to zero. Okay, 
So with this one, we can try our trick. But looking at this one, I don't think it's going to work here, but we can still try it out. So let's try two and two, two and three, just to show you that it doesn't work all the time. So if I put a 2x there and a 2x here and then a 2 and a 3 there and then check our work, you'll get 4x squared minus 6x plus 4x minus 6. This will give me 4x squared minus 2x minus 6. Does this look anything like the original? Not a close. No, we're looking for positive five and we got a negative two. So again, one of our quick fixes is to switch the numbers around and switch the signs around. So let's explore that. If we wanted to just switch the numbers around, you would then have 2x plus three times 2x minus two. And if you foil this way, you would get 4x squared, uh, 4x squared minus 4x plus 6x minus 6. And you would get 4x squared plus 2x minus 6. So now we still don't look like the original. So what this means is that our trick that only works 90% of the time didn't work. So this means that two and two and two and three do not work for these factors. So we have to figure another way out of this. Okay. So those options did not work. All right. So again, it's educated guessing test. So I'll leave it up to somebody. What two factors do you wanna pick? Do you wanna do one and four, one and six? one and four, two and three, or do you want to try two and two, one and six? One and four and two and three. Let's try it. One and four, two and three. So I'll put a one X there, a four X there, and then I'll put two here, three there. Let's see if it works out. So FOIL, x times 4x, 4x squared. x times negative 3, negative 3x, 2 times 4, 8x, 2 times negative 3, negative 6. And now put it together. 4x squared plus 5x minus 6. Does that look like the original? Yes, lucky yes. Woo! That's why it's an educated guessing test. Wasn't lucky. That was educated. <laughs> it checks out, which means we have factored it correctly. And now you can set it equal to 0 and solve 4x. Here, x equals negative 2. That one's done. And here, 4x equals 3. And x equals 3 fourths. Beautiful. OK. Let's see. What else is a good one? Uh, number 10's fast. Why not? We do number 10. Okay. All right. Number 10 is 3x squared minus 12 equal to 0. Again, this is just like the number 7 we did. So this is a binomial. So we only look for greatest common factors to take out. So looking at 3 and 12, what could you factor out? Three. three. So if I factor out a three, this leaves me with x squared minus four equal to zero. And now 
the inside, x squared minus 4, is something we saw the very first problem. It is a difference of two perfect squares. So what would x squared minus 4 factor to? x plus 2, x minus 2. That's it. x plus 2, x minus 2. That is a difference of squares, like the very first problem today. OK. Now, since it's factored, you set each term equal to 0. But this time, we will ignore the 3. And why do you think we ignore that 3? What's not attached to that 3? In order for it to be considered special and we can solve it, it needs to have what variable attached to it? X. An X. If there's no X attached to it, we don't care about it. If it was 3X, then we would care. Other than that, we leave it alone. All right, cool. So 11 will turn into a difference of squares. Um, 12 will turn into a difference of squares. And 13, we're good. 14, we're good. Let's see what's on the next page. Oh, here's just a bunch of repeaters. Ooh, that one looks crazy. All right, let's go jump to 17. Let's do it. Seventeen. Twelve x squared minus thirty two x minus seventy five equal to zero. Ooh, look at all those big numbers. All right. Seventy five thirty two. I don't think there's any common factors between twelve thirty two and seventy five, are there? Just trying to make the math easier. Like 12 is 1 and 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4. And then 32 is 1 and 32, 2 and 16, 3, no, 4 and 8, right? And then 75 is 1 and 75, 3 and 25, 5 and 15. Yeah, don't see anything in common, right? Not at all. Okay. So there is no greatest common factor. It's okay. We'll still figure this out. Okay. So again, one of the more complicated ones to factor using the educated guess and test method. So factors are 12, 1 and 12. 2 and 6, 3 and 4. Factors of 75, 1 and 75, 3 and 25, 5 and 15. Is that it for 75? Yep. Yep, that's it for 75. Okay, cool. So we have all our factors listed, and now we have our signs. Minus minus means that we're going to get something plus a number, something minus a number equal to zero. Okay, lots of choices this time. So somebody pick a set of factors. Oh. 
Let's do the bottom ones. Let's try the bottom ones. Let's see if our trick works. All right. So we're going to go with three and four, five and 15. Okay. So this will be 3x, 4x, 5, and 15. Okay, let's check it. Doesn't hurt. 12x squared minus 45x plus 20x minus 75. So you get 12x squared minus 25x minus 75. We're looking for negative 32, right? Worth a shot. So if that doesn't work, switch the numbers around. So now we'll switch that 5 and that 15, and we'll make it 3x plus 15 times 4x minus 5. Let's see where that gets us. 12x squared minus 15x plus 60x minus 75. This gives me 12x squared plus 45x minus 75. Oof. What does this tell us? That's no good. <laughs> Our trick doesn't work again. See, 90% of the time. All right. So that means 3, 4, 5, and 15 are out. All right. Who has another suggestion? Try the middle ones. Try the middle ones. So 2 and 6 and 3 and 25. Let's do it. So 2x. 6x, 3, and 25. All right, let's do it. 2x times 6x, 12x squared. 2x times negative 25, negative 50x, 3 times 6, 18x, and 3 times negative 25, negative 75. Oh my goodness. What is negative 50 plus 18? Negative 32. Is that what we're looking for? Yes. Oh yeah. Looks exactly like that one. Not bad, guys. All right. So we did it. We factored it correctly. So that means we can move on. Set each one equal to zero, 2x plus 3 equal to zero, 6x minus 25 equal to zero. Move that 3 over, divide by 2. There's our first one. And then add that 25 over, and x equals 25 over 6. Good times. All right, not bad. That seemed like the most difficult one out of all of them. Everything else, just a repeater. Want me to work any more of these or move forward? <laughs> Silence. Move forward. <laughs> move forward okay and of course if we have time we can go back and look at some but everything else seems to be pretty straightforward okay cool now i'll have room i can come back to these notes all right and here we go graph and identify that's nothing new we know how to do that uh, answer the following question. I use quadratic formula. We know how to do that too. And use this equation to answer the following. And that's it. Okay, let's work the new stuff and then we can go back and visit the old stuff. Because 27 and 28 is stuff we've done already. 
uh, has nothing to do with factoring. And now let's look at 29. Okay, cool. So 29. Use the equation 3x squared plus 9x equal to zero to answer the following. Solve it using the quadratic formula, solve it using the zero factor property, and discuss the differences between A and B. Okay, and which method do you prefer? I think we know which method we're going to prefer, guys. So we'll start with A, solve this using the quadratic formula. So 3x squared plus 9x equal to zero. And here my A value is three, B is nine, and C would be zero. All right, quadratic formula, X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus four times A times C all over two times A then this would become negative nine plus or minus the square root of, and that is nine squared. So that's 81 minus, actually that's just 81, right? Because four times three times zero is zero. So that just remains 81, not bad, over six. And what is the square root of 81? Nine. Nine, and you get nine, negative nine plus or minus nine over six, and then plus route, minus route. So for the plus route, you'd have negative nine plus nine over six. For the minus route, negative nine minus nine over six. This would give you zero over six, which is zero. And that would give you negative 18 over six, which is negative three. All right. And then B, solve it by factoring everything we've been doing today. Three X squared plus nine X equal to zero. So this is the binomial ones. It's only two terms. So in these, we look for the greatest common factor. So looking at three and nine, what's the, Greatest common factor I could take out? Nine. Well, smaller, right? Greatest, least common factor, I guess I could say. Three. 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 There you go. And from X squared and X, what's the smallest one I could take out? X. And X. If I take a three X out, if I factor a three X out, this leaves me with X plus three. It's factored, it's done, set each term equal to zero, and you'd have 3x equal to zero, x plus three equal to zero, solve for x, here divide by three, divide by three, x equals zero, and then over here, x equals negative three. Same answers there. All right, guys. Which method do you prefer? Zero factor. It's Zero factor property, right? Definitely a lot better. But I mean, you see different methods get you answers. So technically, you could use quadratic formula on everything we've been doing today and still get your answers. But that's just a lot of quadratic formula. Okay. All right, and 30, spot the error and correct it. So you have 4x squared plus 12x plus 9 equal to 0. And then it looks like they try to factor a 4 out. So what's wrong with that? Or is not a factor of 9. Good. You cannot factor 4 from 9. And if you did factor... If you factored four from 12, what would that leave you with? Three X. Three X, good. So our correction should, if you factor the four out, you would, I know you can't factor, sorry. 
you can't factor the four out. You would get three X. So our correction is we leave it as is four X squared plus 12 X plus nine equal to zero and spot the error and correct it. Well, well, I guess we can factor this. So here you would list the factors of four, which are one and four, two and two, list the factors of nine, one and nine, three and three, signs are plus plus, that means I'd have something plus a number, something plus a number equal to zero, and shall we see if our trick works here? Sure. Bottom, bottom, and 2x, 2x, 3, and 3. And if you foiled that, you'd have 4x squared plus 6x plus 6x plus 9. And that would give you 4x squared plus 12x plus 9. Does that look like our problem? Yes. For sure. OK. So all you have to do is solve it now. You said 2x plus 3 equal to 0. 2x plus 3 equal to 0. And move that 3 over. Divide by 2 and x equals negative three halves. Since this one's the exact same equation, x would equal negative three halves. Okay. All right, everybody good with that page? Okay. Yes. Okay, cool. All right. I guess we, we guess know how to graph, but let's look at C. Why not? Since it's an application. Okay. 28. The height H in feet of a small rocket T seconds after it is launched is given by the function H of T equals negative 16 T squared plus 128 T. How long is the rocket in the air? And when is the rocket 112 feet high? Oh, this has to do with factoring. That's pretty cool. Okay. So how long is the rocket in the air? Basically, when does it start and when does it end? So before the rocket lifts off and when the rocket hits the ground, what would the height of the rocket be? Zero. Zero. So this means that we let height equal zero, and we set the equation negative 16t squared plus 128t equal to zero. And now we solve for t. So this again is factoring. It is a binomial. It is the two terms we look for greatest common factor. So look at your numbers first. 16 and 128. Can you factor 16 from 128? Yes. What would I get if I took 16 from 128? Eight. Eight. Good. So what I'm going to do here is factor out a negative 16. And what would that do inside is make t squared positive and the t negative. So this would be t squared minus 8t equal to 0. OK, we're not done factoring because you have a t squared and a t. So what else could I factor from this? T. T. So negative 16 and then T, and that would leave me with T minus 8. Okay. 
Now it's completely factored. We use the zero factor property to set each term equal to zero and negative 16 t equals zero, t minus eight equals zero, divide by negative 16 and we get t equals zero seconds and we get t equals eight seconds. So this means that the rocket was in the air for eight seconds. Okay, that was cool. And now B, when is the rocket 112 feet high? So this is just gonna be like A, they are giving us the height. So H of T equals 112. And this means you take negative 16t squared plus 128t, and you set it equal to 112. Now, move that 112 over and get negative 16t squared plus 128t minus 112 equal to zero. So, Let's see if we can factor this. Can you take 16 from 112? Yes. Yeah, what would that give me? Seven. Seven. So again, if I factor out a negative 16, I would be left with t squared minus 8t plus seven equal to zero. Okay, so we factored out that negative 16 and it changes all the signs. T squared becomes positive, T becomes negative, and then that seven becomes positive. Okay, so now we only have to worry about factoring the inside. And these are the easy ones to factor. So we don't have to make a list for this one. So if I wanted to factor this, look at my signs, minus plus means I'll have t minus a number and t minus a number equal to zero. What are the only factors of seven that can make eight? One and seven. One and seven. It's factored. Okay, and now set them equal to zero. Do we care about that 16? No. No, there's no variable attached to it. So we only set T minus one equal to zero, T minus seven equal to zero, and you get T equals one seconds, and T equals seven seconds. There we go. Not bad. So that was factoring, guys, in a nutshell. So definitely practice, practice, practice. Or if you like the AC method, you could do that. So it's definitely up to you. OK, so for our schedule, yes, we are still behind a day, and that is OK. So that means Wednesday is our test review and monday is your third exam right exam three let's see let's see let's see fall calendar so let's drag that there boom all right um exam three so again, we're behind today. So exam three will be on next Monday. And test review will be this Wednesday. And of course, like I do for all the exams, I will open the exam on Wednesday, you get to work on it all weekend and turn it in Monday. So there you go.